In this video, I'm going to show you some of the early functionality with the CAD program that we're developing within Blue Sky Pro, uh, Plan. And so this is definitely not in its uh, final form. This is just an early alpha version, really. Uh, but I think you'll see that it's on the right track. This will enable you to make custom abutments, crowns, bridges, wax ups, all of those things. So let me just show you a simple case here. What I've done is just imported two models. The first is a model of the uh, scan post. And so a blue sky bio tie base was used. It was screwed into the implant with the um, Rosetta scan post extender placed onto the top of that. And then the ExoCAD slash three shape ball was placed onto the top. So that is the apparatus that you see here for purposes of scanning. And then there's a second model merged in here, which is just of the gingiva without any scan post. So let's first merge in a scan body and register the implant position. So I'm going to orient this to where I'm looking straight on at the ball. And I'm going to go up and add scan body. And there's only one scan body choice in the software right now. So this is something that will expand the library over time. But all I have to do is put a single click right in the middle of this circular face and it will bring in the scan body. Now what you can do is right click this and say align an implant. And you can go and, and let's say that I uh, originally did a Biomax 3.5 by 10 millimeter implant. I would go up here and select that. Let's see here, Biomax 3.5 by 10 millimeter length in the maxilla and we're also going to put on the tie base that I scanned with and so in this case I would select abutment and I would choose the 1.8 millimeter tie base so Blue Sky Bio has uh, a tie base that has a 1.8 millimeter trumpet shaped emergence before it comes out to the flat tie base area so I'm going to okay that and as you see this orients underneath that scan body those parts in the right position so now that everything is registered, I can right click the scan body and delete it because I no longer need that now that everything is registered. Everything from here forward is going to work directly on this tie base. So at this point, I would go over to module and switch to crown and bridge. And we can turn our models back on now, and I don't need the one that has the Rosetta scan post. I just need this working model. So the first thing I want to do is to add a tooth. So I would go to add tooth, and right now the only libraries that are in here are the nobilium denture teeth. So once again, this is early alpha. We don't have all the positions in there yet, um, or I'm sorry, all the tooth libraries. So let's just use a denture tooth, and it will work just fine. I'm going to click OK shift and drop this into the case and now I can reorient this and so manipulate model and let's lock the overall model so that I don't hover on that and get the the rotation rings and accidentally knock that out of position so I'm going to pull this up into the center I'm going to rotate it into the right axis if I need to stretch the tooth mesial distal I can do that with these objects if you can't see your rings, you can turn on the transparency of this model and that will allow you to pull this in more appropriately. So that's good on mesial distal width. Now we want to look at buccal lingual width. Stretch that as well so that it's roughly the same size as its neighboring tooth. And then we want to get its rotation similar in all of the various axes. I can stretch this up quite a bit and then pull it down because I actually do want to create an intersection of where this uh, you know bisects the model. So we'll go with that and then finally I look from the distal and I can see that this still needs to come down further and perhaps be rotated slightly this way. So this is very much similar to what we do in placing a virtual tooth for an implant and now you can see where that tooth is positioned and it needs to be stretched just a little bit more to fill the edentulous space. So that looks good now. 
At this point, we could select the right maxillary first premolar and we could begin manipulating this. So one thing you want to do with this uh, software is you want to roughly get this tooth in its, uh, its final shape before you move on to creating the abutment. So we're going to have all of the global deform tools so I can use this object which uh, puts a boundary box around this and enables me to scale different parts of it. So I could grab this, stretch the tooth up this way, same here. So now that the tooth is designed, we're ready to go ahead and proceed with the designing of the custom abutment. So I'm going to go to the restorative design panel and we're going to build this as a custom abutment tie base. Uh, we're going to use this as the upper jaw, the crown is the right maxillary first premolar, and this is the tie base. So again, all the things that we um, said earlier when we added the tie base and registered the implant. Um, this is a case I'm redoing for the sake of the video, so I'm going to say restart case and so what you're going to see is that now the uh, software it calculates the intersection between the model the gingival model and the crown this is why you want to design this crown uh, as as nicely as you can where it's contoured to the gingiva correctly because the software is going to base the abutment margin on that now Right now, if we were to just proceed as is, the uh, custom abutment is going to be following right at the gingiva. And I like to design these uh, the way that Danny Doming showed me forever ago to do these, which is to have a facial margin that is about half a millimeter sub-gingival. That way, for aesthetic's sake, if you have a little gingival recession, it's not the end of the world. And then mesial and distal would be uh, equigingival. So for some reason that didn't take. Let me redraw that. To redraw this margin, I'm pushing shift. We'll come back in and correct. There we go. You see how that corrected that time. So I'm just drawing this more subgingival. And there we go. Now mesial and distal, I want equigingival, and then actually on the lingual, I'll typically make that supragingival. So when you're doing cement retained crown, you know cement sepsis is a big concern, so it's always going to follow the path of least resistance. And so if you've got an actual supragingival area, that's going to be where the cement can easily escape and really uh, leave no tendency to create cement sepsis. So since I started designing abutments like this, I've yet to see a single one where I was even remotely concerned about cement sepsis. So now that I've uh, determined the margin of where that custom abutment is going to be, I'll click Next. Okay, so here we see the, uh, the abutment, or at least the start of the abutment. So it's not going to show you the transition zone. This is just the axial walls and the occlusal portion of this. So right now it does a uniform amount of reduction. I want to re redo this to where it will uh, you know, actually have maybe two millimeters of occlusal clearance, but axially uh, have a different amount of clearance. But right now, let's say that we want to maintain a crown thickness of let's say 0.75, uh, which would be what I'd be pretty comfortable with on the axial with the zirconia crown. Now, it, it again brings this to where I've only got 0.75 on the occlusal. So I have a few options right now as the software is. I can go back and I can manually shape this down in the next step, or I can flat top the top of this abutment, and I can bring the flat top on this thing down to where I think the ideal central groove would be. So let's just suppose that that was right here. Okay, 
and I can create what amount of cement spacer I want. I can also uh, alter the abutment uh, inclination. So if you look at it from this way and I increase the inclination, do you see how this tapered this more? And so I like to taper it just a little bit more than what it defaults to. So now I'll click next. And at this point I can add and remove. I've got all the same tools that I had earlier. Um, so I may actually do the local deform tool here and drag up a little bit, uh, actually the global deform tool, and drag up a little bit of a cusp tip. So as you can see, it's maintaining that skinny central groove, which is going to have nice thickness to it, but now we have a little bit more of an anatomical shape to this. We could also bring up the uh, marginal ridges if you desired to. So let's go with this. You can, you can shape as much as you want on that. And now you see how it connects everything together. And so here I can create more of a funnel shape to this which I like to do so I'm gonna scoot this up I like to to keep it skinny as it gets up and out of the bone and the tissue and then create that trumpet shaped flare so I'll have a lot of room to make that much skinnier Okay, let's go with this as the custom abutment. So now I can finalize it. Uh, I could say that this is a custom abutment only, or I could say let's create the crown as well with the screw channel. So I'm going to check that and then finalize. So here you see the final result. We have now, if I turn off the model, we have a custom titanium uh, abutment. Actually, this is a what could be milled in zirconia or Emacs or whatever you wanted to is this portion. And you could mill that and then you have the custom crown that would sit on top of this. And here again is the shape of the custom abutment. And of course, this is the tie base. If I was to turn that off, you could see this sliding underneath this. Actually, I will go and uh, turn that off in the surgical guide mode. So here you see the notched portion for the tie base to fit into. And this is all of it assembled. And again, you could turn on the custom crown back in the denture module. So this, these are files that could be printed, they could be milled. And uh, this now gives users of Blue Sky Plan an option to create their own prosthetics. And this will only get better as we go forward in time. So uh, let us know what you think about the initial versions.